friends, welcome back to another episode with your digital lawyer. I am Omotayo Alemeru and I am an intellectual property law expert and a business law expert. So thanks for following my YouTube channel, thanks for subscribing, thanks for sharing my videos, thanks for your messages, your comments, your feedbacks. I particularly want to shout out to Tokini of Tokini Speaks. You all go subscribe to her channel, she is amazing. She reached out to me, I was unavoidably absent last week. I know you missed me, even if you didn't notice. One person did, I guess some other people did. Thank you, Tokini. Thanks for every other person that reached out. And today, we're going to just talk about this thing that goes on in the commercial um, business areas. There are times where you see your product or somebody else is using your work as theirs or leading other people, misleading people, giving bad comments about your own work, especially when they are competitors or they are in similar um, business like yours. Do you know you can actually sue them because that is an unfair competition and there are unfair competition laws guiding such acts. Yes, so that's what we're talking about right now. <laughs> Unfair competition basically is any act of competition that is not according to fair practices. So actions that mislead competitors, actions that are discrediting to your, actions that mislead consumers rather, actions that are misleading to members of the public as regards the quality of your product, especially in comparison to the quality of another person's product. Most likely your own fellow um, competitor so such actions are covered by unfair laws unfair competition laws basically what this law is it, it allows for a level the purpose of such laws is that it allows for a level playing ground for all competitors it allows for competition in a fair manner and not competition that would you know discredit or spoil the image of an existing brand you know you, you try so hard to build up your brand and then someone from nowhere especially when you have gotten to the peak or you have gotten to a really really high standard right and someone from nowhere comes comes around to discredit your work or mislead people or misguide people to think that their work is your work or even give dishonest information about your own brand about your own products right or even mislead members of the public concerning the quality of their own product so there are different acts that amount to unfair competition however you have to note that there are national laws so in your own state you have to check out your own unfair competition laws some some nations allow for um unfair competition in some manner they, they feel like it's just an over exaggeration and no one should be um no one should be, you know, prohibited from competing in a particular manner. For instance, where you you say a word or you give a statement about a competitor's um, brand, and that statement happens to be that fact happens to be it happens to be fact or happens to be the truth about that brand. Some national laws on unfair competition allow that. Okay, this is not an unfair competition. They they see it as a defense or they see it as it is the truth you are saying the truth so there's nothing wrong with that however some other national laws where you say such statement whether it's true or whether it's false it is deemed as unfair competition it's like hello mind your business that's what it looks like except of course what that other person is doing is really unlawful so there are different acts i'll consider like five or six acts that constitute unfair competition and basically what you want to know when you're talking about unfair competition is that there's no hard and fast rule to it and there's no particular leveled standard for it there's no universally accepted standard for unfair competition however the basis for fairness most times in competition is the reason you consider the reason behind the enactment of unfair competition laws and the basic reason is to protect consumers to protect members of the public and to protect competitors now that is basically the reason for 
enactment of unfair competition law. So now that we know the purpose for the enactment of um, unfair competition laws, you want to know the categories of acts that constitute um, unfair competition. So we have um, misleading others, discrediting the product of another um, competitor, disclosing the secrets, a trade secret of another competitor, and um, taking undue advantage in terms of comparison, you know, comparative um, analysis that is really not right. Undue comparativeness, yes, that's another form of, so I've mentioned like four or five, so I will disclose, I will discuss that briefly however you should know that this is very broad it's probably going to be it's probably going to be topic for discussion in subsequent videos let me discuss what considering confusion is as an act of um of fair competition right um basically what you need to know what you need to know about causing confusion as simple as it is you are causing confusion there are consumers out there right and they want to buy your products and there is a competitor that sells similar product to yours and then you go ahead to confuse members of the public maybe they see a brand let's use i like to use coca-cola for instance and then another cola brand that calls itself coca-cola and then they make their, their, their brand red and white or red and something really similar to that of coca-cola you have confused members of the public and ordinarily the people that even help protect others from unfair competition are usually the competitors. That was then when competitors out there look out for um, um, look out for the good in these products and compare to others. Right now, there are so many competitors out there that even the consumers are confused. So, causing confusion is an act of unfair competition. Or uh, um, another example is maybe the game store. You know the game. Yeah, the game um, company, the store. Then somebody else comes to name their business, the the toys. Yes, the toy store. Meanwhile, the game is already registered and you know what they sell. So you are confused. You go into a mall and you see something like the game toys, something really similar. People are confused, especially when you make it so similar that no one can really differentiate between the original brand and this new brand. That's an unfair competition. Another one is disclosing a secret of a competitor. Um, let's use um, trade secrets, for instance. Let's use um, Domino's pizza, right? They have a particular ingredient, whatever it is, that makes their pizza different from every other pizza. And let's assume a staff of theirs, maybe someone in the kitchen, really knows what makes their pizza different from every other pizza. That staff resigns and goes to another brand and goes there to disclose that secret ingredient to a competitor that makes pizza too and then this competitor starts to make pizza the same way Domino's pizza makes theirs that's an unfair competition and such person can be sued for that and the next thing we want to consider is misleading misleading i think has to be the most prevalent form of unfair competition it's just it, it means you are giving out false information, leading members of the con leading members of the public or your consumers to believing that your products or services are like that of a probably a bigger brand or a competitor that is doing way better than yourself. Or it's even about you bringing false information about or leading members of the public to believe that there's a false thing or there's a lesser quality or just generally giving false information about a competitor's um, product. For instance, if making of bread with um, saccharin is really prohibited, right? And then you come around and say, your own bread doesn't have it tastes naturally sweet without the use of saccharin however this other mr a's bread tastes that sweet because he uses saccharin now regardless of the fact that that is true or false you have misled every other bread lover or bread eater in your environment that this person's bread is terrible and yours is good and what's up is if you are really lying about your own the quality of your own Bread. So that's another form of um, unfair competition. So the next one I'd like to look at is um, competitive advertising. 
And this competitive advertising is of two forms. It may be positive and it may be negative. Now, positive in the sense that you are telling members of the public that, hey, I produce um, bread, let's still use bread for instance. I'm a baker, I bake bread, and my own bread is as good as so 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 person's bread. Let's assume that person's bread is the best bread, well known, a renowned bread maker. And then you say, my own bread is as good as this person. So that's a positive, you're making a positive statement. However, you are rubbing off that other person's product. Then another form of comparative advertising, advertising rather, is when you use a negative statement saying, I make better bread than this person. This person's bread is not even half as good as mine. You have brought, you are comparing and the people are like, oh, let's leave so 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 person's bread and move over to this person's bakery. Then this is also similar. The negative aspect of comparative um, advertising is similar to discrediting another person's product. That's another form of, that's another act that constitutes unfair competition. So discrediting, when all you do is, hey, everybody come here, come here, come here. This person's clothes, they make low quality, inferior clothes. Maybe a, a, a designer, a fashion designer, you, you can just go around saying this person's work is of low quality. This person's furniture work is of low quality. You just go around discrediting that person's work. Whether that discredit is valid or is not, in some in some nations they it's of um, it's a defense if it is the truth. While in other national laws, whether it's true or it's false, that's an unfair competition. That's an act that constitutes unfair competition. So the next and last one I'd like to consider is taking on due advantage of another person's achievements. Yes. So, um, I like to use um, Coca-Cola as an example. They are one of, I want to believe they are like number one or number two, whatever it is, in cola, in the cola industry, right? And then, a new, a, an upcoming cola um, company decides to drop off Coca-Cola's achievements. So, you make your products, you deceive people and make the brand, make the trademark make the bottle, the design, every other thing similar to that of Coca-Cola. You are rubbing off their, their own um, you are rubbing off their own achievement. They've gone so far in the industry and then you are just coming up. And instead of you, you know, working so hard and getting your own customers, you go ahead to steal Coca-Cola's consumers or customers in the name of Coca-Cola. So you are rubbing off their achievements. So there are so many uh, so many entrepreneurs, particularly startups out there doing this, you have to learn. I hope this video teaches you that whatever you are doing is not you being smart, it's actually unlawful and it's unfair. It's unfair and there are laws to protect this. There are laws to protect these acts. I hope you found this useful. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned one or two or three things. I believe you did. So whether you're a consumer, this is for you. Whether you're a producer or a manufacturer of products, this video is definitely for you. And for every other member of the public, because you must have consumed one thing or the other, you patronize one brand or the other. So you should know about unfair competition laws and acts. Thanks for watching my video. I hope it wasn't so long, but I believe it was worth it, even if it's so long. Do not forget to please subscribe to my YouTube channel, subscribe by hitting the subscribe button and press the notification bell so you get notified whenever I post more quality content like this. And don't forget to follow me on social media where I get to post more often. I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook. Yes, so on Twitter, I am at my digital lawyer with double L. Yeah, that's it right there. On Instagram, I am at my digital lawyer with an L, just one L. And on Facebook, look out for digital lawyers. Yes, so you're welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're just joining in, do well to check, um, do well to check previous videos on intellectual property law and business law. Thanks for watching. See you some other time. And I promise not to go MIA this time around. Bye bye.